Hello to my Facebook colleagues. I just wanted to jump on really quick and just give you a quick takeaway. For the last couple weeks, I keep kind of hearing the same message that has been an epiphany for me. And one of my goals is to bring you any information of the knowledge I gain, anything that makes our job as EC professionals better and easier. And uh, the thing that I've learned this week, thank you, Kristen. Um, sorry, I just got a comment that came in. Uh, so the thing that I've learned that just keeps seems to come up in the last two weeks is uh, children in trauma. And uh, one of the big things that has really just been weighing on my mind is uh, that trauma isn't what we always think it is. There are major traumas and there's minor traumas. And a lot of times we don't even realize when our own children are going through trauma, like moving to a new home, um, parents being deployed, having a new baby into the house. Those are traumatic experiences for children. And those can cause issues in for the child's behavior. So it's something we really need to be aware of. Uh, we have a child that we've been working with and we cannot figure out like what is going on? Normally, all we have so many tools, and normally we have really uh, good control over situations, and we can usually help all children, right? And so it's very difficult for me when I cannot find a solution to help a child. We do not kick out children from our facility. It is one of my big passions. I, I've got to find a solution. That's just who I am. And um, there's one particular situation we're dealing with that we've been really struggling to have a solution for. So I went to this um, cohort meeting on Monday and just had this epiphany moment. And it's, it's something that seems so obvious to me that I don't know why it didn't occur to me before. But when children are in escalated situations, and remember, escalate does not have to be a major trauma. It could be something as simple as mom and dad are working a lot or mom had to go out of town on a business trip. That puts children in an escalated situation. What ends up happening is the part of their brain that takes over is like in the brainstem area. Normally, we want kids and us ourselves, we want to be thinking in the frontal lobe area, right? That is where you're reasoning, you're problem solving. The fight or flight happens back here in the brainstem area, right? That's when you go into fight or flight mode. Well, when these children are stressed out, they their brainstem, that part of their brain, the primitive part of their brain, the caveman part of their brain is what's taking over. So think about that. If you're having some behavior issues, the normal stuff doesn't work because we're assuming that the children are thinking with their prefrontal lobes, but they're not they are stuck in a fight or flight phase. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're dealing with really tough behaviors. And that should help uh, think of different strategies that will help us to control those behaviors. So if you have a child that's just really, just really hard to calm down or the same kind of things are happening, um, one of the children we're dealing with, it's getting severe to the point that they're like, scratching things until his nails are bleeding. So that is just, it's tough, right? To deal with things like that. And it's even harder when we as caregivers and as the leaders in early childhood can't figure out what's going on and we can't help these children. It's just, um, it's really, really tough on us, right? And there's, you know, and I have to go back a little bit. We can always help them. The thing is, is that we just can't give up on them. So that was just a huge epiphany moment with my education and my background. I should have known. It's something that I should have just kept in mind. It's one of those things that I felt like this is so obvious. Why didn't I think of it before? Which is why I wanted to share it with you today. So normal things aren't gonna work. Our normal solutions aren't gonna work because these children aren't in a position where they can reason. So if they can't reason, why are we trying to present them with information that it would take a reasoning brain to work with, right? So we have to think in terms of if you are in an escalated state, right? If your brain has the fight or flight that's taking over, how would you need to be brought back? And normally you can't get through to us, right? When a person is in an escalated state, we have to wait till they calm down and then we start teaching them techniques. Then 
we start really helping them. So it's never the time to try and help a child while they're in an escalated state. Punishing them, putting them in time more out, it doesn't work. I mean, sometimes, don't get me wrong, they need that reset time. But if you're using time out as a punishment, then it's not, you're not helping, you're not solving any problems. And our goal is to always solve problems for children. So just think of techniques that you can do to help them de-escalate. And then when they are in a de-escalated state, think of techniques you can teach them so that when they start to feel that escalation rising, we can help them to bring it back down. So teaching them calming techniques, like when you feel your heart starting to beat really hard, take a deep breath. Um, I teach children how to scream into a pillow. If you're starting to feel really angry, grab a pillow and scream into the pillow. You know, just, uh, and teach them how to communicate it with us. But you've also got to train your staff to be opening to listening. They have to be able to hear the children. They've got to listen. So training your staff to just take a step back when these children need to tell you, I'm feeling overwhelmed. First of all, we need to teach them to tell us that. And then we need to teach our staff to listen. They have to hear the children when that happens. And your environments will be so much more calm. Uh, normally, that is something we normally do. Uh, we're really good about trying to be proactive about behavior instead of reactive. My uh, staff is trained how to recognize problems before they start. We make sure our classrooms are equipped for problem situations. Uh, your classroom, you guys, it can work as a teacher. If it's set up correctly and supplied correctly, your classroom can actually be another teacher in your room if it's done right. So making sure your classroom is correctly supplied, correctly set up. If you're having behavior issues, that's the first place I look, is how is my classroom set up? Am I Is the classroom environment causing more problems than it's solving? If you've got a lot of running, that probably means that your furniture is all up against the walls and you have runways, right? An easy fix to that is just kind of turn your, think of your classroom. Um, the, when I'm training my staff, I tell them, get on your knees and look at the classroom from the child's perspective. What you should be seeing is a bunch of little rooms inside of one big room. To them, instead of seeing one big room, they should see like a bunch of little areas where only four or five of them can play at a time. And then each one of those areas should have a theme. Right, so you should have your home living, you should have, you know, like soft play, your library, and you don't want to have uh, something loud next to your library. Like home living and library usually don't go too well together because libraries where the children who need to escape can go to escape. Um, the other thing too is we always make sure we have a quiet area in addition to our library. That way, if a child just needs to detach, and, and your quiet areas should only serve one to two children at a time it's really important when they need to get away from the crowd that they have somewhere to go to escape. And then when you have it in place, you teach the children how to use it, right? So then you teach them like, oh, sometimes I'm just so overwhelmed, I don't wanna be around all my friends. So I'm gonna go listen to the books in uh, the listening area, or I'm going to go over to the beanbag and take a book and just read over there. Or you can have a desk with just two chairs, you know, for puzzles, something like that. But that's just kind of think of it in terms of giving the children a place to escape, right? And, but you have to train them on how to use it. You can't just put it in there, you gotta show them what it's for. So uh, that's really important, making sure that your classrooms are set up to help and to be another teacher, basically. Also making sure they're supplied enough. The popular items, you guys know the kids are gonna fight over them, so make sure you have three or four of them. And then teach the children techniques, like um, we use the Pyramid Models Solution Kit, which is fantastic. They're little cards and it actually will show the kids a picture to, and they come up with their own solution. So they'll look and, and the solutions are like, get a teacher, set a timer, share, take turns. Um, there's all sorts of solutions, but they go through these little cards and then together they can figure out what is the best solution for their problem. The coolest thing about that is a classroom that's really well ran on the uh, PBS, the pyramid model or taxi program will end up um, being fantastic for, uh, I'm sorry, I just got sidetracked, but um, the, those are fantastic for helping children learn how to solve their own problems. And then the children will end up teaching new kids how to use it. So as you guys are enrolling kids, the kids will keep it going for you, which is super cool. So 
it, I am I did a podcast episode a little bit on this too. Um, the podcast episode is really more focused on how do we support our staff. That's another epiphany moment I had during this cohort this week that sometimes I always try to solve all my problems for my staff and I don't always realize that all they want to do is for me to listen. And that's just something that I'm really working on. Um, whenever they come to me with, with a problem, I always assume I need to fix it. So I'm just really working on uh, learning how to listen better and just realizing that they don't always need me to fix everything. Sometimes they just need me to listen. So then I go into a lot more depth in my podcast on that one. So I'm not going to get into depth here on that today, but I just wanted to bring that my epiphany for the week to you guys. So, uh, hopefully it helps someone just to realize that brain shift. Um, I'll probably go into that a lot. I know that that is really detailed. And if you don't have a background in neurology or whatnot, it's really hard to understand the significance of that. But I mean, again, the simplest way I could think of explaining it is when children are escalated, they are stuck in fight or flight. Okay. When they're not, it's our prefrontal cortex that is working and that's when we know how to reason through things. So if the reasoning part of their brain is literally turned off, how do you get through to them? That's what you need to think about. Think about yourself. We've all been in the fight or flight mode when you get really angry over something, you know, and, and, and it doesn't have to be big, you guys. It can be small. Think of that feeling you get when somebody cuts you off on the freeway, that road rage, right? People who are normally stable can suddenly get super angry we all do you're in the grocery store something happens there's stuff that all sets every single one of us off in that moment how do you get through to you it's very difficult right so think of that in context of the children the difference with children is it's a lot harder for them to come out of that so we have to figure out ways to help them to come out of that and again on our facebook live i really don't have time to go into that but i think if we just really keep that in mind it's helpful to understand um and it just makes me so sad when i read these facebook comments and i see people like kicking their kids out of their centers and assuming that they're bad there is no such thing as a bad kid there's just they're not getting enough help that's it and sometimes there is nothing we can do right sometimes it's the parents sometimes they have special needs and the parents aren't helping them but you guys just keep in mind when a child has a escalated behavior when something is going on it is always, always the adult in their lives that are doing something. They are contributing to it. Children are not innately bad. We are not born knowing how to behave, right? It is our job to teach children what is appropriate and what isn't. So when you do have a child that's really struggling, just step back and ask you, like, you know, just if you find your staff saying things like, oh, that's just a bad kid. There is no bad kid. It doesn't exist. There are bad and there's not, I mean, I'm not going to say there's bad adults either because there's not. There's well-meaning adults who just don't know what to do. That's really what it is. A lot, most of the time, parents, we're all well-meaning. We just are at our loss. But it is our job to find solutions for these children. And when you figure it out, you really don't need to kick kids out of your programs. I promise. It really doesn't have to happen. So um, I just suggest resources. There are so many great resources out there that we can use. Uh, I'm putting a bunch on my podcast episode. I will link it. Um, I'm going to publish that later tonight. So when I do, I'll link it to this page so you guys can see all the resources. There's a ton of awesome, great free resources that you can train on and then you can train your staff. I highly suggest coaching. Coaching is so much more effective than training. Um, I did a class a few months ago and they showed us the statistics and only 5% of what a person is actually trained on is ever implemented, but 80% of what they're coached on is implemented. So if you do a training with coaching, that's really the key to success. So I'm going to just sign off and just doing a super quick uh, video. It's actually my anniversary. So I'm going to go have dinner with my husband. I hope everybody has a great week. Again, I just want to bring you information as I share it. My passion and my goal is to just really help the community out there, other owners, other directors, just really would do what's best for the children. That's really what we're here for, right? So that is my goal is to bring you guys information to do what is best for the children that we are so blessed to care for. Have a great night, everybody.